Yes, sir. Okay, yun na yung magiging normal nating question. Eh. Uh, do you see my screen? Malinaw po ba? Kasi uh, <laughs> ngayon pong uh, new normal. So, good afternoon to everyone. And uh, uh, I hope uh, you had a pleasant rest before making it here to this session. And let us just thank the Lord for this uh, opportunity. My dear uh, co-teachers who have been actively participating and uh, uh, continuously uh, showing support and sharing ideas so we can make things done because uh, LDM is always fun. All right. Uh, advancing to our business, my uh, colleagues, I am tasked to discuss to you the principles of instruction by uh, Barack Rosenstein. I hope I got the uh, pronunciation correctly. Uh, to start, we all love uh, good teaching. All right. Gustong gusto natin magturo. Uh, ang sarap ng pakiramdam na at the end of the day comes 5 o'clock at alam mong nakapagturo ka na maayos. Walang flaws. May flaws man, may glitches man, pero konti. At nakapagturo ka na maayos, nahihatid mo ng maayos yung inyong lesson. Uh, you, you're, you feel complete pagdating ng gabi. At kahit napagod na pagod ka, very satisfied ka, very overwhelmed ka. All right? Especially when you teach with entertainment because that is how the children learn nowadays okay one question that i am uh, sometimes asked is what is the difference of all this you know reading because I, I i love reading books i love watching entertainment uh edutainment educational na may entertainment writing what uh what's the difference of all this reading entertainment and writing about education actually makes in the classroom malaki po malaki po yung uh, uh, ambag nitong mga simpleng bagay and when i talk about Simple. All right. One thing na pumapasok kayo sa isip ko na bago ay yung principle po ni uh, Barack Rosenstein. This is my first time to encounter Barack's uh, work and my admiration for Rosenstein is uh, largely informed by my experience working with uh, teachers. All right. And with the people in this field. I just began reading this uh, kagabi and I actually in, in the verge of finishing this article. Why? Because uh, napansin ko, it resonates or it echoes for teachers of all subjects and context. Because it, uh, the uh, simplicity of Rosenstein's article, Rosenstein's principle, uh, focuses on aspects of teaching that are pretty much universal, like questioning, practice, uh, building knowledge. Lahat po yung ginagawa po natin. Okay? Bakit ni reiterate po ulit ni Rosenstein? Mga lalaman po natin mamaya. And uh, let me just tell you this. The principle of Rosenstein is as simple as ABC. All right. It was just uh, elaborated meticulously. So let us begin. So the principles came from three sources. Okay. Uh, tatlong researches po ang ginamit para mag-come up po sila sa principles of instruction. That is uh, the uh, work of Barack Rosenstein, Research in Cognitive Science. This research focuses on how our brain acquire and use information. The second, the research on the classroom practices of master teachers. Okay, the, it is how they present materials. Uh, master teachers had been observed kung paano sila mag-present ng bagong material, paano nila i-check yung understanding ng students, paano sila mag-provide ng support sa mga students, at paano sila mag-produce ng mga uh instructional activities okay and the third one the third uh, the third source is the research on cognitive supports to help students learn complex tasks effective instructional procedures such as thinking aloud uh providing students with scaffolds and so on and so forth so these three principles for my dear co-teachers were the uh, backbone were the skeleton of uh barack's work which is the principles of uh Instructions. Even though these are two different bodies of research, wala po silang conflict na tatlo. All right? The instructional suggestions that come from each other are just perfect. Now, in other words, ito pong tatlong research na ito, they supplement and complement each other. All right? And the, the fact that the instructional ideas from these uh, three different sources supplement and complement each other gives us faith na valid lahat ng ginagawa po nating uh, steps sa ating pagtuturo. Alright. Interestingly, 
Interestingly po, we have 17 principles of effective instruction. So, kung nakita ko, wow, 17. Paano ko i-explain? Isa-isa ito. <laughs> Yun, nakita ko, 17 principles that overlap and flesh out. Actually, it was fleshed out to 10 sections only. So, naging 10 na lang po. Yung 7, uh, excuse me, yung medyo may ano po. May interference po yata sa microphone. I believe it's Ma'am Benny. Ma'am Benny, pamute na lang po ng ating microphone. Maraming salamat po. Okay. So from 17, naging 10. Okay. As to why that is, it was narrowed into 110. But I just found out that in exploring the documents, ito po yung 10 na yun. Ayan, binigyan po ng 10. 17 to 10. In exploring the documents, Okay, it could be broken down into just four. Four strands. Okay. These are the strands that I am suggesting, uh, suggesting not rose and shine. Uh, reviewing material. The first one, yung one and ten, I call it review or reviewing material. The second one, yung three to six, I hope you're, uh, you can see my... Uh, then three and six, the questioning strand. The first one is the uh, review strand. The second one is the questioning strand. The third one, itong two, four, eight, I call it the sequencing concepts and modeling. Ayan. And the what, five, seven, nine is the stages of practice. Bakit ko po ba ginawa itong, bakit ko po ba ininarrow down? Kanina ten, tapos ginawa ko ng four. Kasi po, nag overlap po sila sa isa't isa. And I think, mas maganda pag sa explanation, ay eh, magkakasama po sila. Para, kasi iba dito, for example, nagdi-discuss ako sa 1, babalikan po natin yung 1, mamayang na nasa 10 na po tayo. So, ang ginawa ko po, ginawa ko pong 4, para po, magkakagroup na po sila, at mas madali po ang ating explanation, pati po yung ating comprehension. So, let's have the uh, review. The first strand, which is review. And according to the research of Rosenstein, daily review is important in helping to resurface prior learning from the last lesson. Okay. So lahat tayo ginagawa. Napakasimple nung first, ano niya, no? yung, isang, yung principle niya, pinagkumbayan yung 1 and 10, it's just review. Pinaghiwalay lang niya ang daily review, weekly and monthly review. We, uh, we always start with a review. Okay. At minsan, nasusuro tayo. Mga estudyante natin, nag-review nag -review naman na. Nag-review tayo, tinakal natin, pero bakit hindi nila masagot agad-agad? Don't be surprised if your students do not immediately remember anything. Right? They won't. They won't. Lalong-lalong na pag mga bata yan, bago ka pumasok, iba yung nasa isyo, lumilipat. It is a powerful technique actually. Yung reviewing, it is a powerful technique for building fluency and confidence. And it's especially important if we're about to introduce new learning. Okay? Maganda po yung ating pagre-review, daily review. Kasi yung, we, this is a cliche, yung previous lesson po natin, connected pa rin po sa present lesson natin. O, di po ba napakasimple po ng principle po ni, uh, excuse me, Ross and Shine. Uh, ano ba yung mga techniques po ninyo? Eh, may mga iba't iba po tayong techniques like ako minsan nagpapag-games po ako like yung, yung ball of fire na tatapon po yung bola na pinagkumpul-kumpul na papel tapos nag-music, pagka-stop ng music kung sinong natapatan nun, kukunin niya yung first feel ng papel tapos may question doon eh hanggang sa maubos yung papel okay, how about you? May, siguro nagtatanong din po kayo ng 5 questions okay, 10 questions Okay. It is very good to start each lesson with the 5 or 10 question recall check. Okay. Tapos bigyan mo sila ng 5 minutes na mag-isip doon. Tapos pag hindi po nila alam ang sagot, pwede nilang tandaan yung question. Isulat yung question, tapos balikan po ninyo mamaya. Okay. I, I, I do daily review to ensure the start of the lesson is dedicated to recall. Mas maganda pag recall talaga ang umpisa eh. Okay. Pwedeng 10 items lang na short quiz. Okay, or one long question, napakahabang question. Like, uh, magre-recall lahat na pwede niyang isummarize yung buong uh, lesson mo, the previous meeting. Huwag 
po natin gawin yung very ano yung very yung mainstream na po yung komo natin ginagawa na what was our lesson yesterday yan lagi po natin ginagawa what was our lesson yesterday tapos pag may sumagot okay so our lesson ayun na po hindi na po na summarize natandaan lang po niya siguro yung topic mo pero hindi mo alam kung naintindihan ba nila o hindi so yung mga questions na bubuin mo sa recall o sa review or just yung one long question na gagawin mo dapat mako-cover niya 85 or oh, let's say 100% nung previous lesson mo. Okay. Uh, the topic, uh, it will also cover the topic that you will about to tackle. Okay. Uh, weekly and monthly review. Yung daily review kasi for ano lang siya, for uh, short term. Pang short term yun. At a daily siyang ginagawa. So, ibig sabihin, pag daily review, hindi makakalimutan yan. Yung daily review, it will lead to weekly review. And weekly review, its aim is for, ang aim po ng weekly or monthly review is a longer term retrieval practice. Okay? Para po, matuloy-tuloy po yung process ng building, ng pagtayo uh, po or pagtaguyod po ng long-term memory Okay, to support future learning. Ito po yung tinatawag po nating stock knowledge. Ayan, pag may exam ka, oh, stock knowledge na. Ayan, sa mga bata, o oh, sa atin lahat, ang tinatawag din po ito yung schemata. Ito yung mga naka-store na pong information sa brain po natin na hindi-hindi na po maaalis dahil po nandyan na po yan. Kung baga sa panggasin na siya, kimukla, tad, kautik ang tayo. Alright. So, itong principle na ito, itong reviewing, um, weekly monthly review, okay, it returns us to the beginning. So, uh, students will have the chance to review what they have learned and to consider how it fits into a bigger picture. Uh, they uh, better can do this uh, the more load is taken off their working memory as they can recall the information according to the research of Ross and Shan. I'll be reading it. They need to undertake a task from their long-term memory. Ito po yung minsan ginagawa ko, uh, yung weekly and monthly review. I sit with a student. I sit with a student uh, or a group of students during a lesson and kakausapin ko lang sila habang may nag-discuss siguro o nangongop niya sila. Uh, I-storeboy ko po sila habang nang nagsusulat po sila. I talk to them, uh, tinatanong ko yung kamusta naman yung mga work nyo nung last week. Okay? Kasi alam nyo, ang gustong-gusto kong sagot ng estudyante, maganda, enjoyable. Yun kasi yung pampagana ko eh. Minsan eh, pagka, uh, minsan masakit ang matama ang pakiramdam, tapos sobrang init pa sa classroom. Nagkipag-usap ako, kumusta yung activity nyo kanina? Kumusta yung activity nyo last week? O naalala mo yung nagpag-games ako? Nag uh, naaalala naman nila. Okay? At naiintindihan nila yung significance nung uh, uh, nakikita rin nila yung progress na nagagawa nila. Okay, at nadidiscuss din nila pag nag-uusap kami yung mga natututunan talaga nila. Okay. Fun. Nandito. Uh, let's have I prepared an outline for this. <laughs> so that would be the review. Kinagsama ko na po yung daily review and uh, monthly review. So napaka-importante po. One simple principle is review according to Rosenstein. And we always do that. Okay, ginagawa na po, naman po natin yan every day. Ang kailangan lang po natin baguhin, yung questioning o kung paano natin i-present. Again, huwag na po tayong uh, mag-stick doon sa dati na what was our previous lesson? Pag may nakasagot na, proceed na po tayo. No. Eh, yung question mo dapat makakover yung previous lesson. At somehow, okay, magbibigay siya ng hint kung ano man yung next uh, lesson mo. Third, number three and number six, ask questions and check students' understanding that will fall into the second strand that I made. It is questioning. Okay, I'll be reading the suggestion of Rosenstein. Rosenstein suggests that not only do the most effective teachers ask a lot of questions, they also ask different questions. They are more likely to ask questions about the process that they have used to work out the answer. Ito po yung sinasabi po ni Rosenstein. Okay? Pag, for example, nagpa-recitation nagpa ka, 
yung nag-question kay your questioning should allow students to practice using the information they have been taught. Okay? For example, tinanong ka, 1 plus 1 ng math teacher mo. Okay? Pag sinabi mong 1 plus 1 and you answered 2, kailangan, as a teacher, tanungin mo, how did you come up with 2? Kailangan niyang i-express o sabihin sa lahat yung process kung paano nga niya nakuha yung sagot na 2. Okay? Same true, pag tinanong mo rin siya, sure ka na ba sa sagot mo? Gaano ka ka sure? How sure are you that your answer is correct? Okay? So aside from the process na ginawa niya, meron din siyang ma-open up na siguro sarili niyang strategy or strategy strategies, excuse me, that uh, he had encountered sa mga previous years niya kung paano siya nag-come up sa sagot na yon. Okay? Very applicable din to sa mga questions na opinion-based. Pero mas maganda yung may definite answer ka talaga, specific answer, and then tatarin mong estudyante kung paano siya nakasisiguro na tama ang sagot niya o paano siya nag-arrive sa sagot na yon. Okay. Sa classroom din kasi, minsan nagtatanong ako, tapos may sagot siya, tama naman yung sagot niya. Pag tinanong ko siyang, are you sure? Bigla niyang papalitan ang sagot niya. Yun, nagyayari yun sa atin. So, bigla akong tatanungin. Pag tama naman ang sagot niya, very good. Papupuntayin ko siya sa blackboard kung paano niya ginawa, paano, bakit verb yan, bakit noun yan. Yun na po. Minsan, hindi po nila nagagawa. And that uh, pains me as a teacher minsan. Dahil ginawa mo naman na lahat ng discussion mo, sinimplify mo na, pero siguro in some part, nag medyo kulang. So, wala kang magagawa, kundi stop the lesson teach. Okay, and I, later I will discuss them. So, wag na po, lumayo na rin po tayo doon sa tradisyon na uh, asking the students like, do you follow? Any questions before we move on? Okay, did you understand? When majority answered, yes ma'am. Wala na pong questions ma'am. Okay, so you will proceed to the next part of your lesson and you'll go back to that later when your quiz or exercise comes in. Okay, wag na po tayo doon. Kailangan siguraduhin po natin na bago po tayo magpa-quiz, bago po tayo mag-move on sa next part ng lesson natin, kailangan uh, sure po tayo na naintindihan po talaga nila. Okay? Kasi it's like ano eh, in the classroom, I also try to check for their understanding by asking pupils or our learners to apply what they have learned to a new situation. Okay, mahilig po ako doon na i-connect po yung pag ginag aralan nila sa real-life situation. Kasi gusto ko real-life ba uh, real based lahat ng answer nila. Kasi it all boils down to one thing eh. How you will apply the learning in real life. Okay? Secondary na lang siguro how you will apply your learning pagdating ng quiz o exam. Kasi matche-check mo rin as teacher na itong mga sagot nila pag binase nila sa uh, real life Ito yung tinatawag nating next step, yung susunod nilang step pagkatapos nilang ma-acquire yung knowledge o yung itinuro mong lesson. So, ask questions and check student understanding.